Hey there, Hydro Haven family. Today we're tackling one of gardening's most transformative subjects, how to bring dead, depleted soil back to life using the miracle of humus and complementary techniques. If you've ever looked at a patch of lifeless dirt and wondered if anything could possibly grow there, this guide is your roadmap to creating an oasis of fertility where nothing seemed possible before. Understanding Humus Nature's Soil Miracle at the heart of all soil restoration is humus, not to be confused with hummus, though both are life-sustaining in their own ways. Humus is the dark, rich, fully decomposed organic matter that forms when plants and other organic materials have been completely broken down by soil microorganisms. It's what gives healthy soil that earthy smell we associate with forests and fertile gardens. What makes humus truly miraculous is its structure. Under a microscope, humus reveals a complex matrix of stable carbon compounds that act like a sponge for both water and nutrients. This remarkable substance can hold up to 90% of its weight in water while also binding to essential minerals, preventing them from leaching away during rainfall. So think of humus as both a reservoir and a pantry. It stores water and nutrients and releases them gradually as plants need them. The transformative power of humus really comes from its ability to address, well, just about any soil problem you might run into. Is your clay soil too dense and compacted? Humus creates spaces between particles which improves drainage and aeration. Sandy soil that can't hold water or nutrients? Humus acts like glue, binding those particles together while also increasing moisture retention. And if you're dealing with acidic or alkaline soil that's throwing off nutrient availability, humus can help with that too. Humus buffers pH extremes, bringing soil back toward the neutral range where, honestly, most plants really thrive. Creating and sourcing quality humus is, honestly, pretty straightforward. The most direct way to introduce humus to your soil is through well-aged compost that has fully completed the decomposition process. And just to be clear, this isn't your fresh kitchen scraps or half-finished compost. We're talking about material that has been properly processed for at least a year, where the original organic matter is no longer recognizable. When done correctly, roughly one-fifth of your original organic material transforms into stable humus that can persist in soil for decades. It's kind of amazing how much long-term benefit you get from that transformation. For the home gardener, leaf mold represents one of the purest forms of humus you can create. All you really need to do is collect fall leaves, shred them if possible, and pile them in a corner of your yard where they'll stay moist. It's honestly that simple. In one to two years, you'll have dark, crumbly leaf mold that's concentrated humus. This forest gold can be used as a soil amendment, mulch, or even as an ingredient in potting mixes. If you don't have time to wait, aged manure from herbivores mixed with their bedding, often called black gold by experienced gardeners, provides a readily available source of humus. Horse, cow, or sheep manure that has been properly composted for at least six months delivers both humus and a balanced spectrum of nutrients. The key word here is aged, Fresh manure can burn plants and introduce pathogens, while properly aged manure is safe and beneficial. When I discovered the synergistic relationship between humus and biochar, it honestly revolutionized my approach to soil restoration. Biochar is carbonized organic matter created through a process called pyrolysis, basically burning biomass in a low oxygen environment. The result is a highly porous carbon structure that can persist in soil for hundreds or even thousands of years. On its own, fresh biochar can actually temporarily reduce soil fertility by absorbing nutrients. But when biochar is charged or activated with humus-rich materials before application, it becomes a soil supercharger. Here's my method. Mix equal parts biochar and finished compost. Moisten thoroughly, cover with a tarp, and let sit for two to four weeks. During this time, the biochar's millions of microscopic pores become colonized with beneficial microorganisms and filled with nutrients from the compost. 
This charged biochar humus blend creates what I call permanent fertility, a long-lasting soil improvement that won't decompose or wash away. Apply this mixture at a rate of about 5-10% to of your total soil volume by spreading a 1-2 to inch layer and incorporating it into the top 6-8 to eight inches of soil. Unlike other amendments that need regular reapplication, this treatment can transform soil structure for decades. Leveraging plants as soil healers. While humus can work wonders on its own, combining it with strategic planting accelerates soil restoration dramatically. You know, nature has evolved plants specifically designed to rehabilitate poor soils, and we can totally harness their power in our gardens. Deep-rooted dynamic accumulators like comfrey reach way down, tapping into subsoil minerals that are just out of reach for most other plants, and they bring those nutrients right up to the surface. So, if you plant comfrey in the worst areas of your garden and harvest the leaves regularly, you can use them as mulch or even compost material around your more delicate plants. Each comfrey leaf basically becomes a concentrated mineral supplement as it breaks down helping to form humus and delivering all those trace elements to the surrounding soil. Legumes like clover vetch and beans actually partner up with soil bacteria to capture atmospheric nitrogen, converting it into forms that plants can use. In really depleted soil, you'll want to combine your humus application with a cover crop of crimson clover or field peas. As they grow, their roots exude sugars that feed soil microbes, accelerating the formation of soil aggregates. When the plants are later cut and left as mulch, they contribute to humus while releasing their stored nitrogen. For compacted soil, daikon radish works as a natural drill, creating channels up to 30 inches deep. Plant thickly in fall, letting winter freezes kill the plants naturally. As the thick roots decompose in place, they leave behind tunnels filled with organic matter nature's version of double digging, but with the plants doing all the work. Microbial accelerators teeming with life, the formation of humus depends entirely on soil microbiology, the billions of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and other microscopic organisms that break down organic matter. In severely degraded soils, these populations may be drastically reduced or missing entirely. Adding specific microbial inoculants alongside humus can, you know, really jumpstart the restoration process. Worm castings provide one of the richest sources of beneficial microorganisms, containing up to 10 times the bacterial diversity of even the best compost. Introducing just 5-10% to 10 worm castings by volume when applying humus can dramatically accelerate soil healing. These castings also contain enzymes and plant growth hormones that, honestly, stimulate root development and protect against soil-borne diseases. For fungal-dominated environments like woodland gardens, actively aerated compost tea, often called AACT, applied as a soil drench brings in you know, billions of beneficial microorganisms. You can create your own by steeping quality compost or worm castings in water with an aquarium bubbler for about 24 to 48 hours, and then just apply the liquid to soil that's already been amended with humus. This creates honestly ideal conditions for the microbes to establish themselves and begin the important work of soil building. The most effective approach really is to combine all these strategies into a unified system. Here's my step-by-step -step process for bringing dead soil back to life. Start by spreading a 2-3 to three inch layer of quality compost or aged manure across the area. This provides immediate humus and introduces beneficial microorganisms. Water thoroughly to help the amendments make contact with the existing soil. Next, apply a half-inch layer of charged biochar humus mixture across the surface. This creates a long-term matrix that will house beneficial microorganisms and honestly, stabilize nutrients for years to come. Plant a mix of soil healing cover crops. I recommend a combination of daikon radish for deep soil penetration, 
crimson clover for nitrogen fixation, and buckwheat for fast growth and mineral accumulation. Allow these plants to grow until they begin flowering, then cut them at soil level, leaving the roots in place and the tops as mulch. Water the area with actively aerated compost tea to inoculate the decomposing plant material with beneficial microorganisms that will, you know, accelerate humus formation. After allowing this initial treatment to process for four to six weeks, you can begin planting your garden. Focus first on hardy pioneer plants that tolerate less than ideal conditions and then gradually introduce more demanding species as the soil continues to improve. The beauty of this system is that it becomes self-reinforcing over time. As soil health improves, plants grow more vigorously, producing more organic matter both above and below ground. This, in turn, feeds soil microorganisms, which create more humus, and that supports even more plant growth, a virtuous cycle that just keeps building soil fertility year after year. So, maintaining your soil renaissance. Well, once you've brought your soil back from the brink using humus and these complementary techniques, keeping that fertility really does become pretty simple. Annual applications of compost or leaf mold at about half the initial rate will totally compensate for the humus that naturally breaks down over time. Rotating cover crops during fallow seasons or between plantings will continue to build soil structure and organic matter. And remember that truly regenerative gardening is about starting processes rather than completing tasks. The initial investment in adding humus and implementing these restorative techniques sets in motion ecological cycles that continue long after your active work ends. Within a few seasons, you'll find yourself working with the land rather than fighting against it, the true mark of successful soil restoration. If you've found value in these soil restoration techniques, please help spread the word by subscribing to the Hydrohaven channel and sharing this video with fellow gardeners. Together, we can transform more depleted land into thriving gardens, one patch of soil at a time. Until next time, keep your hands in the soil and your eyes on the horizon.